Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Dear respected brothers and sisters We are acquainted with the battle of Uhud And there are many lessons for us to learn from this battle But unfortunately time does not allow us To talk about every single lesson we could learn from this However I would like to focus on one lesson And one incident that occurred during this battle But before we get to that incident We need to uh, talk a bit about the events that, that occurred before this incident so we know that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded the archers to remain on Mount Uhud under any circumstance and the archers were doing so but once they saw the that the Muslims had the upper hand in the battle they thought that the Muslims have won and they started collecting booty and the Quraysh saw this so they turned around and they came back and they attacked the Muslims and during this time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also hurt his molar was damaged and Nusayba bint Ka'b who was there her actual name was Nusayba bint Ka'b she was known as Umm Ammara and she, it and this was a nickname she did not have a child whose name was Umm Ammara but rather this was a nickname for her so she saw that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is hurt and remember she is a sahabiyah that went on and took pledge in Aqaba with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Mus'ab, Mus'ab radiyallahu anhu used to come and propagate to Aus and Khazraj the deen and they would accept Islam then these small groups would go to Aqaba middle of the night they would go to Mecca and they would accept uh, they would pledge allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so she was one of those sahabiyah that pledged allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now she could have she was already a Muslim she could have just left it but her love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was such that she wanted to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she wanted to pledge allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in person so imagine when she saw, saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he's hurt so the very first instinct she has, she picks up a sword, an enemy sword. She picks up a bow and an arrow, enemy bow and arrow. And she starts protecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is seeing this and he's calling her son that come help your mother. And one of the enemies, Qami'a, he is coming to attack Nusayba bin Ka'ab. He's coming to attack her. And he manages to attack her and he strikes her on her neck and she had a very severe injury because of this and then the rest, remainder of the sahaba came and they started protecting Nusayba bin Ka'b now the interesting thing is while Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is calling out to help Nusayba bin Ka'b she is saying oh prophet of Allah make dua that I attain your company in Jannah this is what she's asking for while fighting. She's ready to die. This is what she's living for. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, made this dua for her there. In fact, after the battle, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say that on the day of Uhud, on my left and on my right, whichever side I looked at, I would see Umm Amara fighting. And she was not there to fight. She was just there to serve water to the soldiers and attend to the wounded that was her purpose there but she couldn't take it that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is hurt and no one is protecting her so she took matters into her own hands and this injury she had this remained with her this remained with her this deteriorated her health this deteriorated her health over time now this wasn't the only difficulty she went through. She went through many difficulties for the sake of Islam. She had two sons, Abdullah and Hadib. Towards, uh, near Towards the end of the Prophet's life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he chose Habib radiallahu anhu to go and talk to Musaylama, who was the false prophet, who was claiming that he's a prophet, to go talk to him and convey his message. So when, Musa when Habib radiallahu anhu got there and conveyed the message he asked Habib radiallahu anhu a question that do you believe Muhammad is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said yes I do then he asked him 
do you believe I am a messenger? He's, he tries to dodge this question. He says, I, ca I can't hear you. So this angers Musaydama. So he ties Habib radiallahu anhu up and he cuts him limb by limb and keeps on torture, torturing him until he passes away. So when this news came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he along with Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu went to visit Nusayba bint Ka'ab and they told her this had occurred. She vowed on that day. Imagine what a strong woman she is that her son just passed away. And she's told that it happened in such a brutal way. But she is such a strong woman. She vowed that I will kill Musaylima. I will kill Musaylima. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu became the Khalifa, she convinced Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to send her out to fight. So her other son and she went out to fight against Musaylima. Yeah. So the interesting thing is Wahshi radiallahu anhu who killed the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hamza radiallahu anhu. That very spear that killed Hamza radiallahu anhu fought against the enemies in this battle. And he managed to get a hit with that same spear on Musaylima. And during this time, Nusayba bint Ka'ab and her son are fighting through enemy lines to the extent that she had 12 serious injuries and her arm was cut off. She still kept on fighting. And she reached up to Musaylima, who was already hurt by Wahshi, by his spear. She grabs her spear and she stabs him again and again and again. And this stabbing was not for her son, but rather for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he went as a messenger for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was representing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he killed her, if he killed her son, then ultimately she, he disrespected Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then she came back to Medina and then she passed away in Medina. And during this battle, she had white hair. This was her strength. And she fought battle almost over battle. She was almost in every major battle of Islam. Either she participated in the battle or either she witnessed that battle in her life. So no matter how difficult things get. Nusayba bint Ka'ab radiallahu anha reminds us that things will get easier and our end goal is Jannah. That no matter what scenario, what condition we are in, we need to attain Jannah. Just like she's fighting for the Prophet of Allah and the Prophet of Allah is worried for her sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she's worried about the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. So how, no matter how difficult things are, we need to remember that we need when we think about this story this should give us hope this should give us hope that jannah is our real abode jannah is our real destination this is just a phase that we're walking